Is there data on the intelligence, the IQ of parents as it relates to the children? Yes, and there is some evidence, genetic evidence of kind of a, uh, of of an interaction between uh, the parents' IQ and the environment. That, that high IQ parents provide an enriched environment, which then can impact the child in addition to the genes. It's that environment. So there, there are all these interactions that, you know, um, but it's not, you know, think about the number of books in a household. This was a variable that's correlated with IQ. And, and uh, it is. Yeah. Well, what, well, why? Especially if the kid never reads any of the books, it's because more intelligent people have more books in their house. <laughs> and if you're more intelligent, and there's a genetic component to that, the, the child will get those genes or some of those genes as well as, as, as the environment. But it's not the number of books in the house that actually directly impacts the child. So the two scenarios on this are, you find that, uh, and this was used to uh, get rid of the SAT test. Oh, the SAT score is highly correlated with the social economic status of the parents. So all you're really measuring is how rich the parents are. Okay, well, why are the parents rich? <laughs> okay. Yes. And so you could, the opposite kind of uh, syllogism is that people who are very bright make more money. They can afford homes in, in better neighborhoods so their kids get better schools. Now the kids grow up bright. Where in that chain of events does that come from? Well, unless you have a genetically informative research design where you look at siblings that have the same biological parents and, and so on, you, you can't really disentangle all that. Most studies of social economic status and intelligence do not have a genetically informed design. So any conclusions they make about the causality of the social economic status being the cause of the IQ is, is a stretch. And where you do find genetically informative designs, you find most of the variance in your outcome measures are due to the genetic component. And sometimes the SES adds a little but uh, the weight of evidence is it doesn't add very much variance to predict what's going on beyond the genetic variance. So when you actually look at it in, in, in some, and there aren't that many studies that, that have genetically informed designs, uh, but when you, you do see those, the genes seem to have an advantage. Sorry for the strange questions, but there's, is there a connection between... Um... Uh, fertility or the number of kids that you have and G factor. So, you know, the kind of conventional wisdom is uh, people of maybe is it higher economic status or something like that are having fewer children. I just loosely hear these kinds of things. Is there is there data that you're aware of in one direction or another on this? Well, strange questions always get strange answers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, so, so do, you, do you have a strange answer for that strange well, question? Well, the, the answer is uh, there, used to, the, the, there were some studies that indicated the more children in a family, the, the firstborn children would be more intelligent than the fourth oh, or fifth or, or sixth. It's not clear that those studies hold up o o over time. And of course, what you see also is that families where there are multiple children, four, five, six, seven, you know, really big families, uh, the social economic status of those families usually in the modern age is not that high. Uh, it, maybe it used to be the aristocracy used to have a lot of kids. I'm not sure exactly, but there, there, there have been reports, uh, of, uh, correlations between IQ and fertility. Um, but I'm not sure that the data are very strong that the firstborn 
child is always the smartest. It seems like there's some data to that, but I'm not current on that. How would that be explained? That would be an, uh, a nurture. Well, it, it could be nurture. It could be in uterine environment. I mean, boy, biology is complicated. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, it's, and, and this is why this, you know, like many areas of science, you, you said earlier that there are a lot of gray areas and um, no definitive answers. Um, this is not uncommon in, in, in science that the closer you look at a problem, the more questions you get, not the fewer questions, because the universe is complicated. And the idea that we have people on this planet who can study the first nanoseconds of the Big Bang, mm -hmm. that's pretty amazing. And I've always said that if they can study the first nanoseconds of the Big Bang, we can certainly figure out something about intelligence. That allows that. I'm not sure what's more complicated, the human mind or the physics of the universe. Uh, it's unclear to me. I think we overemphasize. Well, that's a very humbling statement. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a very human-centric, egotistical statement that our mind is somehow super complicated. But biology is a tricky one to uh, unravel. Consciousness. What is that? <laughs> That's, well, I've, uh, I, I, I've always believed that consciousness and intelligence are the two real fundamental problems of the human brain. And, I, and, I, and therefore, I think they must be related.